I actually like Mike Pompeo. We don't agree on like things like sexual reproductive health and all those things. But I think again, there's. You have his number? Would you say he's a friend? No, I wouldn't say he's a friend. He's a secretary of state of the United States. But I would like to become his friend. Okay. I do respect him. I've come to central London to meet Nimko Ali, an FGM activist who's recently been given an OBE from Prince Charles. You became an OBE when recently? December. Well, I got it last. I got it given last June, and then I got it in December last year. And you got the OBE for FGM. For what? for helping to end FGM, mm -hmm. which was really interesting. In that because like Prince Charles and actually Camilla Parker Bowles has been really amazing because she's the president of Wow. Um, so she has been very what much. Wow is, is Women of the World. It used to be at the South Bank Centre. Yeah. And it's basically where I first spoke about FGM. And so she's the president of that kind of... And Camilla um, genuinely cares about FGM. Camilla, Camilla genuinely cares about FGM. There's a lot, you know what, I don't, like, you know, all the people I work with generally care about FGM. Mm -hmm. African leaders are the ones that don't generally care about FGM. I remember when I was first started the activism, um, I started talking about FGM and I was getting death threats every day. And I was getting death threats from, with, from Somali men. And I remember going to the police station crying, saying they're actually going to kill me because they were like literally trying to kill me. If you, Nimrod, had sent me the same stuff that Somali men had sent me, then you'd be arrested for threatening my life. But we just give this pass to black men or ethnic minority men as though they don't really understand the complexity of um, violence against women and girls. I think a lot of people become really blind when all of a sudden that, that you're brown. They're like, oh, you must be doing it for a different reason. I'm like, no. How did you get connected to Ivanka Trump? Because of the fact that we wanted to talk about FGM ending through economic empowerment and not through aid dependency. Okay. She's done some like incredible stuff and the women economy, um, economic empowerment stuff. What is she? Um, so, so, so basically out of the White House and linked to the State Department now, she has a program where she really like um, has been talking, using her privilege and her platform to start talking about having women around peacekeeping. So in, in terms of peace building, at least having women around the table and then also looking at really, Something actually changed on the ground because of Ivanka? So, yeah, so one of the key things that, that changed is the fact that across the world there are barriers stopping women being economically empowered. So sexist laws, whether like you know you can't have national ship if you're a woman, and somewhere um, so sexist laws in Somalia, in, no across the world, right. but but specifically in Africa. So for example, in the Ivory Coast, there's there's legislation that you can't own land as a woman, and um, the the largest um, like you know economic um, the the largest business in in the Ivory Coast is cocoa. Women could farm, could harvest, take it to market, but they wouldn't be able to make the profit because it wasn't their lands. Ivanka so, actually delve into the details of that. Yeah, no, no. So basically, so basically, yeah. So the whole point is that actually, what what's stopping women from? by like, you know benefiting economically from their hard work and it was that piece of legislation which Ivanka helped take out which meant that women could own land key people within the um, Trump administration are anti-abortion and they're anti-choice and um, one of the things is that I could spend all day arguing with that but I live in a country where um, the fact that I have a, um, a government that believes in that and I have access to contraception I have access to ability um, to have a termination if I wanted to do so um, I could, I could, I could use that kind of narrative. I'm just like, you know, as a feminist, argue with that. Or I could, like, you know, work with them in the, in, in the two things that they agree in, which is democracy, so giving women access to papers and the ability to vote, and giving women access to have money. The thing with me about Trump is, Trump has an eight-year term maximum. Like, this is the whole point is that you guys, like, it's a, it's a privileged white thing to invest and like spend so much time focusing on Trump. Yeah. There are African dictators that have led Africa for almost 60 years. And the interesting thing is when somebody said, oh, oh, Trump is like an African dictator. We don't elect our dictators. They take power with a gun. So the whole point is like, by be, be, before the end of this decade, um, Trump is going to be a nobody again. I think a lot of people are focusing a lot of energy on Trump. I think Mike Pence is the big problem. If he wasn't vice president, I think that would be a great thing. What is your view on Candace Owens? I believe that she's, she's allowed to say what she's, she wants to say. But I find what she says quite pro pro problematic. And what I also found really problematic was the way that people were coming at her. So there was a lot of racism and sexism that were towards her. So basically, like- so she's, the, she's a victim or did she say things you, do you agree with some of what she no, said I don't agree, about- No, I, I don't agree with anything that Candace um, Owen says, but the whole point is like, sometimes like, you know, she's like, she says she says a lot of vacuous things and it's like, she's like shouting, shouting, shouting. And, and it George kind of, Floyd essentially is saying, 
Yeah, forget he was a criminal. It. Yeah, he was a criminal. And the f- That's and then, what she said. Yeah, but then the whole point is like, so so for me, in that sense, I'm thinking, well, even if he was a criminal, if you believe in the rule of law, you don't believe in like you know executions by the state. So how can you uphold a constitution that says due pro- um, that, that due process is a thing, but then at the same time, okay, somebody being killed without any kind of trial or any kind of conviction. I, what, what are you talking about? Does he have the right to humanity? Yes, he does. Does everybody have the right to basic human rights? Yes. People are always going to die. So why do I need to cheapen my political and moral standpoints in order to kill somebody? I'm too vocal for being like, I don't I don't say what black people should be saying. I don't say what immigrant people should be saying. I don't say what Muslim women should be saying. So the idea of the fact that I can actually be an individual within a broader collective or community is something that's quite troubling for a lot of people so a lot of people have issues with me we are so scared to offend that nobody's having intellectual conversations